Hello guys and welcome to day two of Money Live here in London. I hope you're enjoying the second day of the agenda. Uh, before we go on to our discussion, I'd just like to get a moment for both of you just to introduce who you are and where you've come from, please. Hello, it's fantastic to be here on day two of Money Live. My name is Monica Opsapian. I'm the head of financial services industry at OpenText. Hi, uh, my name is Simon Masterman and I'm the financial services uh, lead value consultant for OpenText. That's brilliant. Thank you. Well, we're really interested in looking at the wider fintech space uh, at this event. We're really examining what's changed, what's the same, and what the future is going to start to look like. In, in your opinion, how has the pandemic accelerated a new normal in fintech? We've seen some trends as a result of the pandemic. The pandemic really accelerated some trends. Um, as an industry, the trends really haven't totally changed, mm. but the narrative around the trends have changed. What we're seeing is that customer experiences have really changed in the sense that consumers today want faster, better, seamless engagements. Engagements that they started seeing during the pandemic as they experienced in other industries. When that heart attack moment happened and we all went into our homes, we started engaging with brands such as Amazon, Uber, Netflix, those seamless, frictionless engagements. And we started expecting those same levels of digital engagements from our financial services institutions, mm. be it our banks or insurance companies. So we expect those same digital experiences from our banks. We also want our banks to engage with us and offer us the same level of products and services at the right time. It's things that we weren't necessarily getting from them at the same time, employees being at home want the same type of experiences and engagements from their institutions. And they want the same level of digital experiences offered to customers. On the other hand, extreme automation. So what can be automated should be automated. We're calling that <coughs> humanizing the digital and digitalizing the human. And the institution should digitize what can be done internally and also externally. Cloud. Everything that can go on the cloud should go on the cloud. Becoming cloud fluent is what Deloitte actually calls it. And then ensuring security across the board. Cyber. Attacks have gone on the rise. As an industry, it has taken an incredible set of hits, upwards of 1,300%. So ensuring um, cybersecurity, risk, and compliance is absolutely top of mind. Those are some of the trends that we've seen happening within the industry. Anything you would like to add, Simon? No, I mean, I think the, the employee experience is that, that new level of engagement, you know, customizing just experiences for your customers mm. is fine but those same customers are working within the industry as well so you really need to engage with them in new interesting ways because there's that war on talent that we talk about a lot um, so just because you've got a slick front end for your customers it's important to have that same level of engagement internally in the bank as well mm. and in terms of what innovations we can expect to see in the future. I mean, you've touched on a few of them in your answers so far, but I was just wondering is there anything specific or anything okay. significant that you're looking forward to this year? Well, I think the, the past couple of days have been really interesting. We've, we've spoken to a number of uh, personalities from, from around the industry, and there's a couple of key themes that keep coming up. So, um, regulation, top of mind always. If you're not talking about regulation, you're not really talking about the industry, right? It's super regulated. Transformation, again, it comes up time and again. And it's one of those panacea terms that, that people talk about to, to really cover as much a, a, of things as possible. Um, but what we, what we are seeing is there's still a need within the industry um, to reduce the costs and to actually look to kind of provide holistic solutions um, that service not a point in time, 
but to service an entire, entire journey for a customer, for a corporation, whatever that may be. And we've actually recently um, did a press release uh, for uh, a partnership we've engaged with, with Close Brothers. Um, and what they did is they, they had their four main business units and they've operated individually uh, for a number of years now, pretty much their entire history. And they realized there was a great um, cost saving to be made to make that holistic uh, kind of solution across all of their divisions. But that also allowed them to have insights into a single customer. You know, it was no longer line of business focused, it was for that entire engagement with the customer. So that helps with also compliance because everything's in one place. So there's, there's cost savings, there's compliance, there's customer centricity. And that's really what we're seeing a lot more of now. So trying to be smarter with the investments that the banks are making, not just externally to the bank, but also internally within the bank. Right, to understanding who your customer is across the enterprise, being able to serve them at the right time with insights. And as we're, as consumers, we are generating a lot more information today. So arming the institution, the enterprise, with the right information at the right time to be able to address the needs of the customer and to service them with insightful, contextualized, and personalized mm -hmm. services and products across the enterprise in the ecosystem is absolutely critical. And that is what institutions need to do in order to be able to stay competitive in this environment. Yeah. And the, the growth of information is a, is a great thing. We've been talking about it for years, right? The, the more digital channels you have, the greater the, the volume of information. And because of what's happened over the past two years, people are engaging more digitally. You know, video calls, that's, a, that's an obvious thing, right? But that's a growth of information. Um, and with regulations like ISO 20022, that's forcing the industry, the payments industry, to actually grow the amount of information they're sharing when a transaction is made. So we're not just, you know, people have been talking about the growth of information for years and they've been just predicting, but now we can look back at what's happened over the past couple of years and really see that growth has exploded and regulations are forcing that growth to explode further. And the regulators love to come in behind everybody and say, actually, you know what, there's more information, there's different types of information, we need to start controlling that a bit more. And again, we've seen that, you know, things are changing um, in the industry and the European Bank is working on a number of uh, regulations coming later in the, in the year to actually uh, ensure that the information is being used correctly. That's brilliant. Well, thank you very much, guys, and the best of luck with your partnership. And I hope you enjoyed the rest of the day two of Money Live. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much.